For this video, we are gonna dive deep into what prefetching is and how to use it to improve your app's performance. Let me demonstrate what do I mean. So when I click on get started in my AI language exchange and I click on sign up, I allow my users to select the language before they sign up. But did you notice how long it took for languages to get loaded? I have a quick fix for this and it will make load of all the languages instantaneous. Inside this repeating group of uh, languages, I do a search for languages. So every time I click on this group focus to be displayed, um, Bubble does this search for languages right at that moment. That's why it takes some time. So to hack this, so to say, I'm just going to drop repeating group on a page. It will have only one row or maybe even unlimited rows with one pixel. And the data source will be language. I'm just gonna do a search for all languages. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this unlimited, and I'm gonna make this one pixel, and I move this to next. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna refresh this page. Click on get started, go to sign up, select language, et voila. Do you see how fast this was? And the only reason this was this fast is because when page got loaded, this list of languages got loaded automatically. Uh, so by the time I'm clicking this and I'm trying to kind of select the language, Bubble got the list of languages already on the page. So I'm gonna refresh this page again. And I'm just gonna try to demonstrate again. So get started, go to sign up, click on languages, boom. It's right there, fast as speed of light. When you've got large number of users using your app, also a huge number of data in the database, you do not want to display the huge repeating group on a page because it's gonna take a lot of time to load and it will uh, not affect your uh, page performance in a good way. So what usually we do is, instead of having this repeating group, RG screenshots, what we're gonna do is, I'm going to create a variable on a page and do the pagination. Uh, this is no new concept to anybody, I think, uh, unless you're a very beginner, but let's just do this. So N of items, right? And it's going to be a number. And it's going to be like 10. Oh, let's do five for the sake of our example. And I'm going to make it a, it can be fixed one pixel by one pixel, I can make it here. So what I'm going to do is RG screenshots will load items until variable number. Okay, so I'm going to uh, refresh this. And you're going to see we only have five items, right? What we're going to do now is I'm going to build load more. And I'm going to make it margin 40. I usually never do margins, but for this sake, uh, sake, well, I try to avoid using margins. I'm always going with uh, paddings and gap spacing between elements. I think that's much cleaner, but it's totally up to you how you want to uh, run this. So what I'm going to do is when load more is clicked, I'm going to uh, display data in a group, variable n of items, and variable n of items number, plus, let's say, 5. So now, in this case, what's going to happen is we're going to see only 5 items on page load. When I click on load more, we're going to see 5 more, and then 5 more. So this loads pretty fast again because uh, my database is pretty clean. It's it's got only like forty items in the DB, and it loads pretty fast. But what you want to do using prefetching is that you might want to have another repeating group on a page. Um, 
going to paste it here. And this is gonna be variable RG at least, whatever whatever name you wanna give it. Uh, but in this case, since this is variable, I'm going to completely delete this. I don't need it. Uh, I don't need this to have a margin of 100. I can make it first. But what I'm going to do now is this variable repeating group will have a variable. You know what? I'm going to create another variable. So this might be like a little awful too much, but n of items next. n of next five, let's call it. All right. So this would be variable n of next five is number plus five. So now what happens is I'm going to load the list of next five items on a page load. So every time I click on load more, the list that bubble has to load is already on the page. So it will not have to go to the server to uh, load the data. So basically what's gonna happen here is the following. So I see load more, I click on it, I've got my five, got my five. So every time I click on load more, I load next five in here, which is super fast because I already have that five on a page. And on top of that, what happens is this repeating group, variable repeating group, variable list um, kind of gets refreshed. So every time I load next five, this also loads the next five. So this will be n of next five is number. All right, so this should be like much faster now. But obviously like for the naked eye, it will be hard to kind of differentiate because as I said, I don't have too many items in my list. But when you have to experience a live application, which has large number of users using the app concurrently and also large number of data, that these users are downloading, the app will be significantly uh, slower if you do not implement uh, some smart ways of loading the data. Various concepts mentioned in this video I've learned from different uh, bubble devs. It's uh, Wes and Vic from uh, Flusk, it's Peter Emley, and it's Pablo Heredia. So I'm gonna link their uh, socials down below in the video. So please uh, go out and uh, check their socials and give them a follow. See you in the next one.